Welcome to part three of this video series created for students studying CFD analysis of a quadcopter. In this part, you will learn Fluent Solution Mode workspace. You will also learn how to use basic operations under domain and physics to solve simple problems from beginning to end. This is Fluent Solution Mode that we have launched from Fluent Meshing Mode in the previous part. This is a steady state simulation. So if we go for a steady state, this is a turbulent model. We can find different turbulence models here under the models and viscous. There are a lot of turbulence model, but best choice for most of the flaws is K omega SST, which is the default model. So press OK. The next step is to define the material. We are going to use air. Double click on air. There are options for the density. You can try incompressible ideal gas or ideal gas for this study. Change and create and close. The next step is going to cell zone conditions. As we discussed in the previous parts, we have four domains as rotational zones and one domain as the stationary zone. For the enclosure domain, you have to check that if air is inside the domain. Now you have to set up the rotational zones. Before defining these settings, I want to show you how to display the zones inside solution mode. You can find display mesh in different places, but one of them is here, display mesh. You can deselect or select all the zones here. We want to like visualize which one is rotor one. So let's say rotor one walls, then display. You can also visualize the global reference frame, which is here. It's under reference frame, global, and then display. Okay, the rotor one is the upper right corner one. Now you can go to space claim and double check that which one is rotor one. Hide everything, just visualize rotor one. Now we want to find the axis origin for these rotational zones. For that one, you can go to measure, select measure, the center of the rotational zone first, then select the global reference. Then it's gonna give you the correct coordinates from the center of the rotational zones to the global reference. So they have both positive signs here. Edit rotor one and define frame motion. Use those numbers as the rotation axis origin. We are going to rotate the propellers in the clockwise. So it's gonna be minus one in the Z direction. You can define the rotational speed here. Usually the rotational speeds are in RPM unit. If you wanna change the unit, you can just go to units under domain, then find angular velocity and change that one to RPM and close. The RPM that we have chosen for this one is 7350. And make sure the air is inside the domain, apply and close. Now you have to repeat these setups for the other rotational zones. After defining the cell zone condition, you can go to boundary conditions. Select rotor one, then change the type into interior. That was the side walls of the rotational zones, which shouldn't be a wall that needs to be an interior. It's only rotating. You have to repeat these setups for rotor two, rotor three, and rotor four. You can hide this global frame reference. If you go to reference frames, global, right click, and then hide. So now we have four rotational zones that we have defined the center for the rotation and the axis and the RPM. And then the side walls are defined as interior. 
The next boundary condition is the outlet for the enclosure. You can have pressure far field for this boundary condition. The Mach number is going to be different based on the speed of the air inside the enclosure. And if we consider like the normal breeze for the air, something like around 14 to 15 meters per second, the Mach number could be something around 0.03. But you can also consider some storm condition, increase the wind speed inside the enclosure, and then try different Mach numbers for your study. The next step, you can just go to solution methods and double check that if the second order of wind has been selected for most of the equations that they are going to be solved. So the default settings should be okay. And if you have any issue with the convergence later, you can try this high order term relaxation. You have to define some report definitions to check that if your simulation has been converged or not. So to do that, you can just select report definition, right click, and then new. So one of the important items for this type of studies is the force for the propellers. So you can select force report and then, for example, force, give it a name, force, in Z direction, then define the correct direction for the forces, define the walls that you are going to visualize the forces, and select per zone. I am going to deselect report files and only keep the plots for visualization. The next step, you have to initialize your simulation. Choose hybrid initialization and initialize. Next, you have to define the number of iterations here. You can try something around 0.5 for the time scale factor and then put 1000 iteration for the number of iterations and then press calculate. In the next part, I will show you a converged solution and we'll continue with the post-processing of the results.